Child, here we are again at yet another dinner table. We finding out Rockstar is really a throw it off his rocker and Malaysia and Philo when he got them damn kids. I guess she's trying to make a little case for child support. Kill the music! Oh yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. I drive a player like it's nothing, it ain't working out. Now no debate or fuck discussion, bitch, I'm walking out. I'm walking my out. time is money, I ain't loving, let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out, look how I just bossed it out. Now come on, baby, why you bugging, we can't talk it out. I keep it moving, I ain't tripping, lost another spouse. I'm just a boss, it's in my blood, no, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my key. Cause oh yeah, bitches and hoes, I'm back. Back with another video, we have discussed Basketball Wise Season 10, Episode 2. Girl, let's just get into it. So the episode opens up Brandy and Malaysia having that conversation. Basically, Brandy wants to know, why is it that you couldn't call and send me any condolences because you knew that my dad was dead, right? And Malaysia is dying on the hill of she had no clue. I find it very hard to believe. I'm not going to say it's impossible. I just don't feel like it's probable that she didn't know and had no clue. I do also feel like Malaysia is the type of person who has an attitude to where if she don't like you, she don't care what's going on with you at the moment. She don't like you. She not dealing with you. So she probably knew it was just like, fuck that. I'm not calling because we beefing right now. If that's the case, then it makes all the sense in the world. Malaysia can be really nasty to people. Sleepy eyed Malaysia can be very nasty to people. She just can't. That's, I mean, she's been like that since she lightened her skin. And for the life of me, I don't understand why. Like, why? What changed, girl? I know your skin got a little lighter, but what changed? I was confused. But anyway, she's down on that hill, Brandon. She said she ain't about to uh, say she knew because she didn't know. Malaysia even goes into the thing saying, oh, you now you attacking my character, trying to say that I knew something and I didn't know. And, da -da -da -da. and I'm just sitting here going, girl, listen. I would have just told her one last time, listen, I did not know. I know now. Here's my condolences. I apologize. That's literally all she had to do from the very beginning. Because even Brandy says, you you know now. If you didn't know, then you know now. So what's the difference? Yet she has yet to give the girl the condolences. You, she did say, oh, I didn't know. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Or, or I had no clue. She tried to kind of like catch herself, like make herself not look so bad in that situation. But at the end of the day, girl, like... Just say, give the girl your condolences. Y'all been friends for 15 years. Don't, I mean, I'm sure you were kind of cool with her father. I, I, I have to believe that. She, her dad lived with her. Like, Malaysia, it doesn't make sense. Now, you want to try to turn this around and make it like you the victim. No, you're not the victim. You're doing too much. Just give your condolences. I'm, even if y'all not friends right now, give your damn condolences. It's not that hard. Jesus Christ. But anyway, Brandy's still dying on that hill because Brandy loves Malaysia. She still wants to be with Malaysia. That's her um, her carpet friend, if you ask me. That's what I'm going to call it, allegedly. But um, that's what I feel, and that's how I'm going out with it. So Brandy feels like you around here telling people we good and we not. And Malaysia said, I never said that. She turned around to the, the crowd of the girls and said, are anybody over there telling this girl that I said we good because I never said that? And basically, Jackie was like, nope. I, I, I ain't never say nothing to keep me out of it. And Jackie getting her confessional. She's very concerned because she know they've been friends for a long time. She wanted to get back on the good foot. I love Jackie. Jackie is so cool to me. Malaysia lets Brandy knows I'm a lot of things you don't like. And that's fine. We don't need to be around each other. So Malaysia gets up and leaves. Um, Brandy walks away as well. But I feel like Brandy is more affected by them not being friends than Malaysia. Malaysia can have a very cold shoulder if it makes sense. So I feel like Malaysia is just like, especially if she got her own stuff going on, I feel like she's not gonna, it's not gonna matter for her either way. Like she's still gonna be good regardless. I don't like that on you, Malaysia. I don't like that. But she gets up and walk away and Jen asks Malaysia, was she okay? And Malaysia was just like, I'm good. I'm good. And then Brandy's sitting over there crying, saying she just don't understand how this person could just be so cold. Girl, it's Malaysia. See, this is what y'all got to understand. You know people, because all y'all do is watch how they treat other people. You got to know your turn coming, fat. You got to know that. I don't know. I don't understand why you didn't think you ever had a day coming. She do this to everybody else. Why didn't you think your turn was up next? I mean, it, was just, it wasn't a matter of if. It was just a matter of when. That's just my opinion. But whatever. Jen asks Malaysia if she misses Brandy. And Malaysia, with a straight face and sleepy eyes, said no. Jen even had to turn around and ask her twice. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
So you mean to tell me you don't miss her at all? And with them sleepy eyes and a stark face, Malaysia said no. And you know what, Brandy? It's, it, it's a wrap. Everybody ain't meant to be friends, girl. It is what it is, girl. Move on. Go find you somebody else. Go go be dependent on another bitch. Because this is just too much at this point. Girl, let her go. Let Malaysia go on about her business. Malaysia got a lot going on. Because you can't tell me after being friends for 15 years, you don't remember. I mean, you don't miss her. You can't tell me after being friends with somebody for 15 years, you don't miss them. I have a friend that I've been friends with since middle school. And me and her hadn't talked in months. And I think about her a lot. Like, you know what I mean? So, that's bullshit. Y'all, whatever. Anyway, let's move on. Jack is FaceTiming her husband, Doug. And she's just like, oh, this is crazy. Because, you know, normally I'm on the road with Doug. But now that I'm not, we have to do FaceTime. Doug was just like, you know what, baby? It's going to be all right. We're going to be back together. Back in stride again. Just give it a little minute. You know what I'm saying? But Jackie was like, you know, it's something I'm getting used to. But I'm coming around. Yeah, Brooke and Angel are talking, and basically Brooke's saying that she feels like Angel's having a boy. So Brooke is getting her, her rounds around everybody and, you know, making her connections. I like that for Brooke. And Jen is talking about getting a foot tattoo for what I don't know. She said she got her mama name tattooed on her foot so her mama could guide her steps. I thought Jesus was the only one person to to guide your steps. At least that's what I thought. That's what they taught me anyway. So let's move on. Brooke and Brandy go... Uh, meet up and Brandy doesn't know why she's there but turns out you're there because she's getting nipple piercings now this is my thing Brooke you look amazing first of all girl body is banging got to know that oh girl you look good but um how old is you going to get your nipples pierced now I know where you're going with it with the age thing because you know they say the sex drive heightened up a little bit you know the older you get so you probably on that real freaky stuff I ain't mad at you for that but I was just wondering you know if it was for fashion or if it was for fun if you know what I mean. But anyway, Brandy goes in there and Brandy um, gives her a hug. Brooke is excited to meet Brandy or hang out with Brandy, I'm sorry, because she said she had so much fun with her at the wedding. She seems like a really cool girl. Brooke is very excited about making connections. Brooke, watch your back. These girls will stab you in the back. Watch your back. Don't be too excited. Just a little bit. But anyway, so Brooke is uh, excited to hang out with Brandy. Brandy was like, girl, why are we here? And the doctor came out or whoever it was and said, oh, she's getting her nipples pierced. Brandy was like, oh, damn, this is a way to get to know somebody. Well, all right, listen, I would have been there watching, girl. Let me see this because I want to see if it hurt. I might get mine done. Shit, quiet as kept. But um, Brandy was un was a little uh, thrown off because she was like, she has beautiful boobs. Like, I didn't know why she would want to put piercings in them. And that's because it's probably for fun and not fashion. Say what I said. Brooke immediately starts off giving her condolences after she lets her know what's going on. Because she was like, you know, in this day and time, you need girlfriends. I get it. You know what I'm saying? So she gives her condolences. You see that, Malaysia? You could have did that. But you didn't. You choose not to. You refuse to just because you feel like you, you're going to lose something. And that is weird to me. I'm sorry. But she gives her condolences. And Brandy says she's excited that she's getting to meet new friends. She's trying to get over her last love, Malaysia. So she's going to try to use all these other girls to get past the hump so she can be all right. But it ain't going to work, girl. Brooke is excited because she's having a birthday party slash dinner and birthday party, whatever you want to call it. So she's excited about that. She says her parties are always over the top. Everything is always top notch. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, she's she been a housewife for the last five years. Was that her? Yeah, she's been a housewife for the last five years, girl. She is just, you know, ready to let her hair down, let her wig down, as you should. We move to the next scene. Angel, Rockstar, Duffy, and Iman are having dinner, Lord. You know, before I start with this, this segment, I always thought, when I heard she was pregnant by him during the pandemic, I'm not even going to hold you. I was like, how, she, how he get her? I'm not trying to say Angel is no Beyonce or no Halle Berry or nothing like that. I mean, as far as like weight class. Angel is a very established, successful woman. Very. Um, again, I got I to gotta Google Rockstar. Rockstar must be getting money for her to even entertain him. That's the only thing I can think. But 
I just never thought they were here. You know what I mean? Rockstar, I, all I have from him is the love in hip hop. Was it LA or Hollywood or whatever it was? And he was just so childish and immature. Oh, girl, I wouldn't let him breathe in my direction. But you did, girl. You let him do more than breathe, apparently, because you got a baby on the way. But I just wanted to throw that out there. I never really understood that. So they all at dinner, girl. Duffy asked them how they doing, how things is going. Rockstar says, well, you know, I am a, a, a Scorpio. And Duffy was like, child, my friends done dated Scorpio men and they done told me horror story, stories about you Scorpio men or whatever. And he was like, you know, I don't think so because I'm selfless. You know, I'm more of a selfless person. So I don't think that necessarily could be true. So Duffy turns around and asks uh, Angel what attracted her to him. Like, how did she get him? Because, girl, we all want to know. Inquiring minds. We all want to know. Girl, Angel said, I don't know. With a straight face. And we all looking like, what? Even Duffy was like, wait a minute. What, what's happening here? So, basically, Angel goes into detail that basically Rockstar got a bad attitude and he talks to her crazy. She wasn't raised in the house like that. Her mama didn't talk to her daddy crazy. Her daddy didn't talk to her mama crazy. And he gets on 20 and then he wants to just start yelling and screaming. And she feels like if I come at you with a good energy or with a certain tone that's not negative, you should give me that in, in return. Rockstar says negative. Basically, he should be able to do what he want. Girl, Angel, you better take your baby and run. No, well, you ain't got to run because I'm pretty sure he probably all up on your shit. Get him out there, girl. Run. Get him out of there. Red flag. Red flag, girl. I'm telling you, red flag. Get Rockstar the hell up out of there. You're going to thank me later. Get him out of there. See what I said? Get him out of there. But it's awkward for Duffy. Duffy was just like... Uh, I, this is weird. He's over there blaming the hormones. And Angel said, ain't no hormones. Because Duffy was like, you feel the hormones? She was just like, no. I'm just tired of you talking to me crazy. Like, that's just what it is. Like, you, I don't, I don't come up like that. I didn't come up like that and I ain't trying to be like that. I said, oh, Lord. Oof. Duffy's concerned. She was like, Lord, it's so early. Y'all just got together, but they're pregnant. So everything sped up. And Duffy's concerned that they're not really feeling each other. Well, I'm glad because I didn't want her with him anyway. And not, not that it's up to me, but God damn, Angel, you could have did better than Rockstar. Come on now. she. But Duffy don't know if they're going to be able to weather the storm. Girl, the storm has come and gone. Ain't no weather. It's time for them to kick it, kick it up out of there. Let's move on. So DJ Duffy is at home practicing her DJ stuff. She lets us know she taught herself off of YouTube how to DJ. Go ahead on. See, that's me. I learned everything off of YouTube. I learned how to fix that damn lawnmower on a, on a video off of YouTube. YouTube is a school. You don't need college. You don't need a trade school. All you need is YouTube. Duffy learned how to DJ off of YouTube with her laptop. And now that girl DJing for French Montana all over the world. YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. No, I'm sorry. You welcome YouTube for the free promo. Even though I'm using y'all app. Whatever. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, she taught herself how to uh, how to do her DJ stuff. She's feeling like she's done so well, and she's done, you know worked with all these different people, met, went all these different places, and she she it, it kind of slowed down during the pandemic. Well, it did for everybody. Nobody could go outside. So now that French is about to go back on tour, she can get back into the swing of things. It's gonna be great. She's ready for the for the ball, basically. She's ready. But Iman came in with different agendas. Iman came in and said, um, yeah, you preparing for the tour? Oh, okay, so you need to quit. <laughs> I was like, what? So he wants her to focus on something else. He wants her to progress, go somewhere else, do something else. The DJing was cool. You did it for nine years. It was, it was cute. Now it's time for you to be a mother. You have a child. Child Duffy was like, but wait, I, 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 this is my career. This is what I love. Like, I... I, I just don't know if I want to give it up yet. He said, look, you my woman. I want you home. And you know what? I said, I'll quit. Marry me. You want to give ultimatums? Let's give them. You got to put a ring on. And I ain't no wife. I need to get the benefits of being at home, taking care of the child. Put the ring on it. This is the wrong hand. Put the ring on it. Put it up on that. You want me to stay home. You want me to quit my career. And even though that will only be a temporary thing, because I don't I, see... That's a whole other story. Because I, I don't believe in having to put your career on the side to be a mom when dads don't do that. Typically. 
But anyway, at least my first rebuttal will be put a ring on it. Because if you like it, you should have put a ring on it. Y'all been together nine years, girl. What are you waiting on? He ain't trying to give you that generational wealth, girl. You better marry his ass. Y'all make him say what I say. Anyway, let's move on. So, girl, this was the most exhausting scene of the whole show. Zell in Malaysia go sit outside somebody's stove with some old ass cupcakes. Girl, first of all, this ain't got nothing to do with Zell. Zell ain't never did me nothing. But Malaysia, now she's turning on the I'm the victim thing. You know what I'm saying? So they sitting outside eating some warm ass cupcakes. And she's telling him what happened at the party between her and Brandy. So Zell is a mutual friend of both of them. Cool. Malaysia feels like Brandy can't accept the fact that they're different now. They're not the same. They, when they hung out, you know, it was over three years ago. She was young. I'm like, girl, it was three years ago. But she was young. Um, she had just got divorced. You know, things have changed. She's a single mom now. So we're on different plans. You know what I'm saying? And Zell was like, you know, well, maybe she don't really get that. I think Zell was trying to be the voice of reason. Because he was like, well, maybe she don't really get that. You know, you you a single mother now. You got a lot of different things going on. You know, I, maybe she's just not there yet or understanding where you're coming from with that. So, basically, Malaysia's like, listen, I want to be able to grow. I want to start doing growth, you know, things. I want to do the same old things over and over again. So, he hates to hear that. He don't want them to be. But, um... He feels like, she she feels like the brandy that she, she's experiencing now is not the brandy she's always known. It's a different brandy. Well, Malaysia, you've been the same. Say what I said. And it's not a good thing. But she want to focus on her life. And, you know, brandy this and brandy that. Since she got to LA, everybody want to know brandy, 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 brandy. And she miss her kids and inserts the waterworks. Now, this is what I'm going to have to call cap fat. Malaysia, you've been on Basketball Wives for at least, what they, what they got, 10 seasons? I want to say at least 6 to 8 years. No cap. Um, the, for more than half of that time, you ain't even had your damn kids. We probably got five full scenes of all the seasons you've been on there with the damn kids. Even when your kids lived in L.A., you didn't have the damn kids. I'm there and confused. As to why all of a sudden it's the kids. Now I'm not saying, listen, you a mother, you could turn around and things change, and you want to that maternal instinct kicks in. I get it. I ain't no wrong with that fact. But I'm trying to understand now that you and Brandy beefed out. Now it's all about the kids. Shouldn't have been all about the kids when Gennaro Pargo, whatever his name is, divorced your ass. Shouldn't it have been all about the kids then? Mm hmm But now it's about the kids. You crying because you miss your kids. Go ahead and pick the ass up, girl, because you just doing too much anyway. So, yeah, she's crying because she feels like everybody all on Brandy, 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 but nobody asks her how she doing. She going through stuff. And then she drops the, the, the dreaded phrase, he's not paying child support. I've already talked about that in another video. I'm not going to do it. Malaysia, you're not going to send me there. You're not going to take me there. I done already gave you the instructions. Take your ass down to the white man and have him enforce the child support. Other than that, shut up about it. This is not going to be a storyline for you. This is not. It's not that. No, we're not doing that. Not this season. We are not going to have a season of you crying because he don't pay child support. Ain't about to do it. Next. Anyway, so... After she cries to tell us her baby daddy ain't paying child support, I was ready to throw the whole show away at this point. Because I'm just like, oh, she blows me. Anyway, the girls go to the spa. I think it's everybody except Malaysia, to be honest. The, the girls go down to the spa uh, for Brooke. Brooke is getting ready, you know, for her birthday dinner and her, her after party or whatever the case may be. She's excited about all these friends and excited about her party and whatnot. Brooke is just excited about everything from the looks of it. Brandy asks who all coming to the dinner. So she says, well, I did invite Jackie, absolutely, because Jackie wasn't at the thing. And then she says, Jen can't come because she's somewhere else or doing something else. And she invited Malaysia. Brandy was like, I, I so love her. I really, I really do love her. I really do love her. And Duffy is sitting over there making faces. Now, Duffy, is you in the three-way? Because you are very invested in how Brandy is dealing with the breakup of Malaysia. Now, I get it. Y'all been friends for a long time, but... 
you are very well invested. You, you, your eyes and your face just be scrunching up every time Brandon mentioned Malaysia. Like it, it, it's giving a little what, what's going on. So she's over there saying she loves Malaysia. She loves Malaysia. And Brooke was like, are you serious? Duffy says, this is hard to watch. Girl, she really want to be back with her, her best friend. And Brooke says, listen, whatever. Who all coming? Is, is Duffy, is your man coming? And Duffy said, no, my man watching the baby so I can be out here in these streets. But Brooke's husband, we're going to get to meet him. And I'm excited to see what he looks like because he must have some money. That's all I'm going to say and we'll get there. Duffy says that she's, you know, she's surprised that Iman has stuck with her in the DJ thing this long for nine years. Well, he ain't had to marry a girl. What else he had going on? Why not? Angel show up to her shop. This is the next scene. Angel shows up to her sweatshop. And uh, she's got the people working, you know, I kind of was kind of peeping in the back to see if I seen some, you know, some illegals or something back there. I wasn't really sure, but I was, I was trying to like, you know, you know how you, you feel like you could look be further than you can, but I ain't seen nothing. They had, I don't know if it was a curtain or something up, they had it real blocked off. But anyway, she go up to her shop, girl, and she lets us know that, look, she built her business from the ground up. The girl make dresses for Nicki Minaj, um, Megan Thee Stallion, all the girls, all the top girls, Nicki, everybody. She has made dresses for everybody. And you know what's so funny? I remember when she first came on, she wasn't that big. Shout out to you, Angel. I'm here for it. I'm here for all women. But she, do, she now needs to make a dress for a Doja Cat. Go ahead on. And she says she wants to go all into work. And she feels like work is her escape and her relief. Because that crazy that crazy man Roscoe is at home giving her the blues. And I know his name Rockstar, but he just gives me Roscoe vibes. She She's ready to put all her eggs in her basket, the basket at work, not the one at home. Girl, leave, let, put him out. What is you doing, girl? You got to do all that. Put him out. Anyway. We are at the dinner party. The dinner party is at the treehouse. That's the the thing you see, you see behind me now. We're at the dinner party. They have a treehouse in the water. And I just went. It was really cool and really fun too. Uh, Duffy was like, oh shoot, I used to host here. You know, I used to do my little nights over here. I like to see the growth on YouTube, Duffy. Brooke comes in with her husband, Gerald Lovert. He was kind of giving me Eddie Lavert. Let me retract that. Brooke arrives with Eddie Lavert. I mean, his real name is Steve. But it's giving Eddie Lavert tease. Lavert tease. Lavert tease. That's what it's giving. It's giving Lavert tease. And I say, I knew it right then and there. That man got a lot of money. Oh, he got to have money, girl. A woman like Brooke with, with Eddie Lavert? Chow. I know he got money. That's the only thing I can see. He got money. Say what I said. He got money. Shout out to you, Eddie Laverne. I ain't mad at you. But she show up in a badass dress. You look good, girl. That's more my style. I like see-through black stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, I wear all black. I love black. Brooke noticed that Malaysia is not them. So now, Brandy was like, well, maybe she's going to come to the after party. Duffy over there scrunching her face up. And then Brooke feels away because she was like, she could have called. Like, she could have came. Like, what's going on? Why wouldn't she be here? Brandy responds and said, well, maybe this environment is too intimate for her. So, you know, or maybe she just didn't want to sit next to me. I don't know. It could have been a multitude of things. And Brooke says, girl, bull crap, because she could have sat anywhere she wanted to. She didn't have to sit next to you. It's rude. She should have called. And she should have. She really should have. But Brandy is on this Save Malaysia tour. Well, she's going to probably come to the after party. And this prompts Duffy to open her mouth and say, Girl, go ahead on, take up for your best friend and start singing the best friend song. That's my best friend. She a real, yeah, you know that whole thing. Now Brandy's feeling away. Brandy was just like, she getting her confessional and says Duffy is getting on her nerves with that best friend thing at this point. Well, you know what, Brandy? Stop caping. The girl ain't caping for you. She going around town saying two middle fingers up to you. Stop caping. And I ain't saying you got to talk crazy about her, but you don't have to do what you're doing, girl. You just don't. I'm sorry. You don't. This is too much. But Duffy is driving her crazy. So she she's like, she, she's on thin ice with this. They start to eat oysters, girl. Now, first of all, I wish I was there. I'd eat everybody oysters. I love me raw oysters. But um, Jackie tries to swallow one and spit it out because she don't like the texture. Brooke said, girl, you can tell you ain't giving no flappy, flappy, flappy over there to Doug. And if you could just manage to swallow it, Doug would be a happy man. 
Okay. I'm just saying. Brandy pulls uh, Duffy to the side because she feels like, girl, you're doing too much. She she tells Duffy, like, look, girl, stop. Like, you that stuff getting played out. That best friend stuff is really getting played out. Duffy feels like, well, stop defending her then. Stop defending her, bringing her up and all this stuff. And then nobody will say it. Brandy was like, I'm just used to it. That's how we used to be doing. And Duffy asked Brandy if she misses her. And Brandy denies that she does, but not like Malaysia did. Brandy kind of was doing it on a shy tactic kind of deal. But Brandy was like, no, I don't miss her or whatever. But Duffy says, look, it's been 15 years. That's like a divorce. And it really is. So Brandy gets in her confessional and says, you know what, Duffy is right. Like, it is like a divorce. And it's something that I'm doing because I'm so used to doing it after 15 years. So she's going to work on not coming to Kate for Malaysia. We'll see how that works out. Anyway... Jack is over there concerned about Malaysia on the next scene, so she calls her. She calls to check on on Malaysia. Malaysia says she's been having sleepless nights because Jackie asked, girl, where was you at for the dinner, girl? The people was looking for you. Malaysia says she had been having sleepless nights, and uh, she decided to FaceTime her kids and give them an option. Hey, you want to stay by your daddy, or do you want to come up here to L.A. with me? And the kids was like, of course we want to come up there with you. She feels it's a good idea because the daddy ain't there. He out there coaching, doing something else. So who watching them kids? Because if he wasn't going to be there, I wouldn't let him go there anyway. But nevertheless, she going to get her kids. So Jack is excited for this. She's just more afraid that she's going to have all these kids. Three kids, no, two kids, a dog, in a two-bedroom apartment. And she don't know how it's going to work. You know, being a mother... Is something you have to learn. You know what I mean? And when you've been absent as a mother, things like that can really be afraid. It, it, I'm not afraid. It can really be frightening. I understand. You're going to get it, fat. We all do. Just like Jackie said, my mom will have a nine chair in a three-bedroom house. It's going to be all right. You ain't afraid of the doggone kids being on top of each other. You're afraid of being a mama. And don't think I ain't peeping at the plate. You trying to set it up so when you go down there to the child support court, you had to go get them churned because your baby daddy, your ex-husband, wasn't home. He was out there coaching and hoeing. I caught it. Good play, but I caught it. As you should. Let's move on. Duffy and Zoe are talking. Duffy's telling Zoe that basically, girl, look, I'm over here trying to do this DJ thing, but Iman want me to quit. Iman walks in and says, here, take the baby. And I don't even know why it's a conversation no more. Why haven't you quit? What, what are we doing here? It's not about you quitting. Call it transitioning. Call it what you want. It's time for you to move on. Like, that's what, I'm, that's what I need you to do. And in my mind, I'm like, dang, that's some big energy. He must make good money. That's all I can say. Uh, you know, he must be putting it down now. But Duffy wants to, you know, kind of compromise. Because she's like, listen, this is my career. Something I created. Like, I don't want to have to... To give all that up just to be a mom. I only do it on the weekends. Do it on the weekends. He's not trying to hear none of that. Baby, Iman said, you, I said what I said. You need to make it happen. So when Iman leaves, Zoe was just like, I feel like Iman is really dead serious on you quitting. Duh. He had said it like 15 times. So she was like, I think you should call French. Duffy is real like hesitant to call French because she was like, French is a real friend, you know what I mean? And I don't want to like stir up no nothing. So she ends up calling him anyway. Girl, she called French and tell French that, um, you know, she wanted to let her know about some of the conversations happening in her, in her home. So, okay, now French is on the phone letting Duffy know, you know, when I met you, you had just started out and I feel like you have so much more potential. You haven't gotten to the to the that DJ status that where you need to be. And we got all these shows going on, girl. Like, it's going to be cool. Well, Duffy lets him know that Iman won't tell her to go ahead on and quit. French says, look, you my friend at the end of the day. I respect your decision. Whatever you're going to do, just let me know. I ain't even going to trip on it, but just let Iman know that if you quit, you can't come back. Now Duffy is really in the pickle because French done already told her, if you leave, you fired. Girl, you better make some quick decisions, girl. Maybe you ain't even married. I don't understand why it's so hard. I can see the married couples, but y'all not married. Why is this so hard? To, girl, okay. Go ahead on, fat. Next scene or the last scene, Duffy goes to see Angel because she wants advice on how she was a single mother and so successful in business and all that stuff. And that, might, that put me in the mind of, oh, you trying to leave. Set up your chips, girl. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. And this is all alleged. But Angel uh, asked her what happened, and she basically tell her that, look, 
Iman telling me I need to quit, like, today, like yesterday. Like, he not even talking and, and dealing with none of this. He says I need to be quitting today. And she don't know what to do after she talked to French because she had another conversation with him, and he's still saying the same thing. He don't care that, that French says she can't come back. He don't care because this is not about him. It's not about Duffy, I'm sorry. It's about him. He don't care. Red flag. Make it make it make sense. Red flag. Anyway, she turns around and asks Angel how she's doing because Angel over there looking tired, distraught, and through. And we find out Angel said that she's going through some relationship issues. Mind you, she had to get up from the table at the dinner because Rockstar called her acting a damn fool. She had to leave at the dinner. So when Angel asked, not, not Angel, so when Duffy asked Angel what's going on, she said Roscoe acting a damn fool again, girl. We have a relationship issues. Duffy asked where he at. She said, girl, I, the last place I heard he was was in Los Angeles or San Diego somewhere. She said, we continue arguing and fighting with each other. And she was like, she's trying to figure it out. And she feels like, you know, she's already in the process of having a baby. But even though that's happening, she feels like space is the best thing. Duffy's just like, oh my God, no. And I'm going, yes, girl. Yes. Now, the only part I sympathize with um, Angel is, Angel says she's really big on having her children's father in their lives. She don't believe in not having access to your father. And she feels like with all of this going on, Rockstar is not going to be in the child's life. He gave me that type of vibe from Love & Hip Hop LA or Hollywood. That's the vibe I got from him. Do we have other kids? How is he with them other kids? Because see, all these things should have been what you th was thinking about when you was deciding if you was going to take the plan B. You feel me? You're tracking. How is he with them other kids? Mm-hmm. Ladies, we got to do better than this. I know you got money. It ain't about the money, but you got to do better than this. Drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. Girl, that was Basketball Wives. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you hoes later. Bye. Wait, what did I do that? Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you hoes later. Bye.